Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 57. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 6.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're starting on the sheet less than probability. In this video, we're going to look at the new no 2000 Excel 2010 normal distribution functions. Now we're going to continue with our same example we've uh, used so far in the class of test score. There's a, me a population that has of test scores for a particular instructor where the uh, test has a mean of 12, a standard deviation of 2, and we want to ask the question. Based on past data, estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistics test that will be 10 points or less. Now this is going to involve using the norm dist function. And now I'm on the sheet less than or equal to probability. And I want to compare this chart here, and we'll see how to create this chart in our next video. If I'm, I want to compare this chart to our binomial distribution charts we made last chapter. But let's take a look at this. In, and we talked about this already in the last couple of videos. The area under the curve for a bell-shaped curve is 1. That's all the probabilities. And we're going to be talking about probabilities between two values. Now in this video, we're going to do less than or equal to an x. Uh, two videos ahead, we'll do above a particular x, and then we'll do between. But area, which is probability, is all about, in, in for normal distribution, we got to calculate the probability between two values. So for this example, it's from negative infinity all the way to our 10. That area represents the probability. Our functions will do the integral calculus for us. We tell it, hey, find a 10. It will go from negative infinity to our 10 and calculate the probability. Now, I want to go back over to the sheet B here and just look. We already sort of did something similar. Here we did binom.dist, and we calculated our individual prob probabilities, 0 to 10 in this example, and we plotted them. Now there's two things, two points I want to make here. In binom.dist, we went from 0 to some x, right, and calculated a probability. I'm going back over to this sheet. Oh, we're going to do the same thing here. But how we do it is totally different. Here, this is area. We're going to do integral calculus to calculate the area under this. We're never going to calculate an individual probability. We will use the density function to, to plot our chart, but it calculates height, not probability. Okay? Let's go back over to B. Whereas when we calculated the binome dist with the 0, we not only calculated height of a column, but we calculated probability. OK, so two things. One is the idea of from some low point to some upper point, get all the probability. That's similar between the two. But you can, whereas with binome dist, you can calculate the individual probability. When you come over to normal, you can't do it. We're always going between two values. All right, now let's take an example. Let's look at this example here. Now, so based on past data, estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistics test that will be 10 points or less. That's our goal here. We have our, our, ten, our x value and our operator. Now, why are we allowed to use the normal curve or the standard normal curve? The normal curve plots the x values. The Z, the standard normal curve, plots the Z values. And in our next uh, video, we'll see how to create a chart like this. But why are we allowed to use this? The, these great functions that are going to make calculating probabilities easy. Here's why. Because we have looked at past data for test scores for a particular instructor, and we've seen that the distribution, remember the distribution pattern or um, shape is revealed by, for example, a histogram chart. But that past data gives us an approximately bell-shaped distribution. And that's why we can use the bell curve to estimate probabilities. Second point, this is chapter 6. We're going to know the population mean and the population standard deviation, mu and sigma. Later chapters, we'll see how to do it from sample data, which is usually what you have. But here, we have population data. So what we learn in this chapter is population data. Later, we'll learn sample. We have to learn the central limit theorem first. All right, 
let's go ahead and make some calculations. I'm going to slide this out of the way just a little bit. And maybe I could zoom in. I do want to see a picture of the chart because it's helpful. All right, so there we go. Now, let's calculate our z first. And we're going to see two functions. We're going to see norm.dist and norm.sdist for calculating probabilities. Let's calculate our z. What is z? Equals, yeah, it's the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So you always take your particular value minus your mean and divide it by our standard deviation. So we get units of standard deviation here. Now you can already eye this one. You can see clearly that we're exactly one standard deviation below negative one. So this tells us that our score is one standard deviation below. Remember, that's, this is a standardized value. So then you can compare this to other distributions. And if uh, you know someone else is exactly minus one or plus one, you know the relative position in units of standard deviation. Now let's calculate our probability x is less than or equal to 10. We get to use this great norm, norm dot dist. It's going to ask for our x. Oh, hey, that's our 10, comma, our mean, our standard deviation, and our cumulative. We're going to put a 1 for, for cumulative from the low end to whatever x we throw in here, right? 1. Right, the x that we're throwing in, that's the 10. So it's going to calculate from the low end all the way up there and give us probability. Now, what does that mean? We can conclude something like this. Based on past data, it would be reasonable to assume that on the next test, there is a about 16% chance that a score selected at random would be 10 or less. Or you could say, about 16% of all scores on the next test will be 10 points or less. All right, that's going from our x. Now let's look at norm s dist, a different function. And we can see down here norm s. What does the s mean? This is the standard normal curve. This is plotted with our z values. All right, so look what we have here. Oh, all we need is z. Now, one note here, this function is different than in earlier versions. And we're going to do all our functions, and I'm going to come over here and show you the earlier versions, just in case you get uh, stuck on a computer where uh, you're not, you don't have 2010. This function is a little bit better because it allows us to uh, do cumulative, which one, which we're doing here, or plot the chart, which we'll do next video. All right, so our z minus 1 comma, and our cumulative, it's a 1. Now, this one looks easier, right? But how do we calculate z? We needed our mean and our uh, standard deviation, right? And our particular value for our just norm.dist. But the z already incorporates that information. Nevertheless, this function exists, and people do use it. So there you go, same exact thing. All right, those are going from x and z to probabilities. Now I want to do the reverse. And I want to start off with an example here. What if you were asked the question, what score do you have to be get to score in the top 10%? Well, let's look at this picture here. Top 10%. Well, this is all about area, right? Well, that's way more than uh, top 10%. Let's just type some numbers in here, 14. Well, you can see everything below is about 84, maybe 15. OK, so that's a little bit above. Well, we could go back and forth, back and forth until we get from negative infinity up to whatever that x is gives us 90. Then that top 10%, since area represents probability, that top 10%, everything above that x would say you'd be in the top 10%. Now, I don't want to have to uh, do that back and forth. No problem. There's a function specifically built to do that. Now, what do we do here? We got probability based on an x or a z. Here, we're going to do the opposite. We give it probability or a z, and it will tell us the, the x value. All right, so let's do it. Equals, well, they all start with norm, right? Norm dist is what we just used. You give it an x, it gives us a probability. Norm inverse, 
does the opposite. You give it a probability, it spits out the x. So what is our probability? Well, actually, uh, x. I'm going to keep this 15. A picture helps a lot. Probability, this picture helps a lot. Remember, it's 10%. But remember how these functions work. We're going from a lower number to some x, right? So even though we're throwing a probability into this function, it still is going to expect everything up to that point. So it always goes from the left up to that point. So we can't put 10%. That's on the upper end. We have to put the 90%. So we have to go 1 minus. Comma. Now the mean, it wants the mean and the standard deviation. And there it is. It'll tell us exactly that's the marking point. And you can imagine this is useful for all sorts of situations. Uh, your uh, CPA exam, an entrance exam on uh, for uh, a job, right? They only select the 10, top 10 percent. So you want to know what score you have to get. And this class here for this instructor with this little quiz test at 12, you have to get 14.56 to be in the top 10 percent. Now let's do it with the standard normal curve, meaning uh, we're going to put in our probability again, 1 minus 10 percent, and it's going to spit out an x. Let me change this to 10. They all start with norm, and these are the S ones. The S means standardized normal. We're throwing in Zs or probabilities in getting a Z. So what's a probability? Notice it just asks for the probability, 1 minus. And there we go. So 1.28. Now, you can think about this. If the, we use the standard normal curve, remember Z converts you know, any mean and standard deviation and particular score to a z. So top 10%, if it's normally distributed, is always going to be a z of 1.28. Now, if that's true, can we calculate our actual score from the z? So now that you know this, you could go to any other uh, testing distribution, as long as it's bell-shaped. And as if you knew the population mean and standard deviation, you could just say, oh, yeah. There's our mean, and we're going above, so plus. There's our z's. How many standard deviations? Times the standard deviation. And so we get the same thing. Now, another thing, and we'll do this a couple videos ahead, we'll calculate a bunch of greater than or equal to. But if you know this part right here, can you calculate this part automatically? Sure you can. Because what is this? This is area under the curve is all 1. So if this is 0.158, then all of this above is 1 minus that. Now, we have to remember from earlier videos that when we look at notation like this, x is less than or equal to 10. And then we look at this notation, x is greater than or equal to 10. That equal sign is the same. So down here, this note says, probability of less than or equal to 10 is the same as probability of less than 10. And the reason why is because when we're dealing with this continuous chart here and this area, a line has no area. So because we're dealing with continuous random variable and we're calculating probability from area, and because the area of a line is 0, then this is true. That's just so we don't get confused about that notation. All right, calculating everything above is easy. We do the complement. We know everything on one side and all the rest of it. Um, so we take 1 minus, and that gives us above. A couple videos ahead, we'll calculate this, and we'll actually have to do 1 minus, and we'll put in, instead of there, we'll type out our norm.dist function. Now, one last thing in this video before we uh, see how to make this cool chart next video. I do want to show you the. Whoops, I left that there. I do want to show you the old functions. So norm.dist, because one of them is different. And you want to be aware if you're on an older computer. If we paste this over here and remove the dot, that's just the older function. They in introduced this, this dot dist and dot other things to keep them all consistent. Uh, all the statistical functions news, use that notation. But we're going to get the same thing here if we use the older function without the dot or with. This one right here, 
this function is totally different. Now, in 2010, there's a cumulative argument. And you're allowed to either do the 1, which is the cumulative, or the 0 if you want to plot the chart. That wasn't there in earlier versions. Let's see what it looked like. There was only cumulative. By the way, if you try to enter this and remove the dots, it won't let you because it says too many arguments, because that argument doesn't exist. If I get rid of that, you can see, oh, there's the screen tip, tip for norm s dist. You just put the z in, and it only did cumulative. The norm dot inverse, the same without the dot over here. And by the way, I could copy this down, and I'm checking to see if I'm getting the same answers. And finally, the norm dot s inverse. This one's exactly the same, too. I just get rid of the dots. I better put an equal sign. All right, so the one you have to be careful of is this uh, norm s dist, <laughs> there, was, there is no cumulative in earlier versions, whereas now there is. Actually, this little thing we'll look at in our next video, some of the heights. We'll see that that's not allowed. And we'll also see how to plot this cool chart, including an x and a z. All right, see you next video.